Welcome back, everybody, to the Collector Series on WTC-TV, where we feature the top collectors in the wrestling card hobby. We've had a bunch of great guests up until now. we got a whack lined up for the future in the new year. And we got these two gentlemen here that two are, are two of the top. Uh, Becky Lynch collectors, Prism collectors. Um, is there anybody more, bigger than these guys when it comes to Becky Lynch? I think. Yes. Well, more, more, <laughs> more, more than that. I mean, we just can't. Oh, yes. We can't. We can't have a show about the top collectors and not include these guys. Um, the first guy is no stranger to this channel and wrestling cars in general, Mr. Adam Gilman from Minnesota. Um, you guys obviously know him from his just in time delivery of content on this channel. <laughs> As a which is extremely informative for people. On. We get so we get so many people. I don't get much feedback at all. Paul, you get a lot of feedback from all these episodes. I don't get much. But when I do get feedback, it's usually always about Adam and Ryan's content. And it's always wow. I, I didn't know so that that's so much involved, or I didn't realize the scope of this. So it's very informative stuff. And I think people get a lot of good, useful information out of it. So now all Thanks, now that, that that all said. Definitely check out Adam on WTC TV, but we want you to set that aside and I want you to put on your collector's hat today because that's what we're <laughs> dealing with. We're going to be talking about Adam Gelman, the collector, alongside the second biggest Becky Lynch collector in the hobby, Mr. Matthew Alves. From... Second? I don't know if I call him second. Well, and that's I, the thing. We're going to get you're already get starting a fight. He's number two. Well, well, number two. I, I might be three or four, honestly, for all I know. <laughs> yeah, you know, a bit, of, a bit of background. You know, Tony and I did a poll some months ago, very informal, and we kind of came up with the number 75% of our hobby roughly are PC collectors, as opposed to set collectors or vintage guys or shiny gold or, or, or indie guys or what have you. So it's the dominant section of our market are guys like you two guys that collect specifically one name, Becky, and Tony does uh, uh, Loomis. And, you know, we, we know that Ryan does... Uh, Savage and Brutus, and then JB does this thing. And, and everyone has their own thing. And the reason why I wanted to talk to you guys both because Matt's not only a Becky collection, he, he's known uh, in the hobby as WWE Prism uh, collector. So he's he's one of the top guys for the Panini product. But Adam, you know, it was about, about a year ago, nine months ago, and you, you'd been posting all your Becky shit as it was coming in, especially when Panini hit, and you were getting the tops of the tops, and you were getting ones of ones and stuff. And one day, I said something to you and you said, oh, I'm not even the top Becky guy. I'm like, what? I'm not. Which no. I, I was surprised like, by what? that. <laughs> how, how can that be possible? How could you be buying all this stuff, nailing all these pieces? And yet there's some other dude out there that's 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 got a collection comparable to yours. And you said to me, yeah, yeah no, not only does he have a, a collection comparable to mine, it may even be bigger. And we get along. And I'm like, really? So yeah. And, and that, that went into the mind, like, that's the way Chuck and I do it in, in, in sets. But, you know, just because over the years we've become friendly, now we communicate. And I know Ryan does that with Jamie whenever a, a big savage comes up. So I wanted to sort of address the notion of competitive, competitiveness versus uh, cooperation in the wrestling card hobby amongst that guys. Because we know sometimes it doesn't go that way. You know, you take your Uncle Danny and it doesn't go. So what we're going to do is we've got three sections. We're going to talk about you guys as collectors. And then we're going to specifically talk about Becky Lynch and what you guys got you guys into that and how that all works amongst you two guys. And we're going to talk about your thoughts on where your collections are going forward. So, uh, Matt, let's start with you. Tell us a bit about uh, how you got into wrestling and Becky and card collecting, all that set, stuff in general. Yeah, sure. Um, well, so I, I've always um, had sort of a relationship with cards. You know, back when I was younger, I collected, you know, predominantly basketball cards, um, but then also like some uh, some Marvel cards. And this was back in like the mid, late 90s. Um, I was like, yeah, I was born in 88. And, um, you know, I got into like Pokemon cards and stuff like that. And I watched wrestling during the Attitude Era. And I kind of got out of, uh, well, like a lot of people when the Attitude Era ended, kind of corresponded when I entered high school and I just kind of stopped watching wrestling at that point. Um, but I always uh, had a relationship with cards. Uh, what I didn't stop doing was playing Pokemon. I actually played the card game uh, more than collected. And I, I've played it on and off like my whole life. And so I've always, um, you know, been around cards, um, but it was, you know, more predominantly as a player of a card game, a TCG. And it occurred to me, you know, during the pandemic that um, when, when, you know, sports cards were blowing up and collecting was top of mind for a lot of people and anything that was collectible was going up in price. So it was just, there was a lot of news about it. 
and it occurred to me it was very odd that I didn't um, own uh, a lot of like collectible Pokemon cards, given like how much the game had meant to me. So I started picking up Pokemon cards here and there, like in 2020, 2021. And that really sparked, you know, the collecting of cards aspect. And, you know, I, I enjoy doing that. I still have, um, you know, some some cool Pokemon cards. Um, but, it, you know, the wrestling part of it came in when I started watching again, which again was kind of during that pandemic time. Um, I think we had like, I think I mentioned this before on another show, but I had finished up a, we must have finished up some TV show and we had nothing else to watch, like literally nothing to watch. And it occurred to me, it was Monday night and it occurred to me like, hey, is it wrestling still on on Monday night? Don't they still do Monday Night Raw? And I turned it on and uh, haven't stopped watching since. Like I was just immediately hooked back in. Um, I mean, it helped that like, I think the first segment I saw was with Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, Chad Gable and Otis. So like, uh, I think it was like a KO show. And it's, it was just like a very- pronounced, It's pronounced Otis, sir. Otis, Otis. <laughs> right. um, and so I was just, uh, you know, they, they're very like engaging. They're, you know, it's just a good segment. And I just kept watching. And obviously you know, there are some highs and lows. Not every segment is as good. Not every episode is as good as the, you know, the other one. But, um, you know, so I started collecting. So I, this was in like February of 2022. And this was right before Prism was coming out. And so I heard that Prism was coming out. And I was aware of all the basketball cards in for the, that Panini was doing, uh, and NFL cards, and um, you know the, these gold prism cards that would go for crazy money, um, color blasts, kabooms, all all these parallels. And I saw that you know Panini was getting the license for WWE, and they were going to be releasing this. And I thought, man, wouldn't that be really cool? Because I don't watch a lot of sports anymore. Um, you know, I am like a Bulls and a Bears fan, but I don't watch a ton of sports. I was watching a lot of wrestling. So I was like, wouldn't it be cool to just like, you know, own some of these cards? And uh, so I started, you know, and particularly for a much lower price point than, you know, what other sports go for. So that got me into that. And um, it just kind of took off from there. You know, I, I was sort of just picking up random things here and there um, that I thought were like a fair price. And, you know, eventually I, I condensed my collection, started focusing on one person, which was Becky. Adam, tell us your backstory. You go way back, don't you? Uh, yeah, no, that's funny. And so I can, so now I know I can blame whatever TV network Matt was watching in 2022 <laughs> for my wallet being extremely lighter. So thank you <laughs> to the lack of content during the pandemic. I appreciate all of the butterfly effects. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into which one you guys was first, but anyways, let's go and get your back. <laughs> right, right no, yeah. yeah. So I've, I've been, I mean, for those of you who've been watching WTC, it's, I'm glad I don't have to host for once. That's, right. that's a, a benefit here. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I started collecting when I was really young and um, my dad was a big autograph collector when he was young and sort of just was passed down. And, um, you know, I was probably in the infancy stages of social media on the Internet, uh, you know, for cards. And we're talking about like the old Beckett boards, blowout cards for him, like all that stuff, like. I was heavily involved in that because I'm, I work in technology and like, this was always like, how do I connect with more people? How do we shrink the globe? Right. Which is why, you know, I'm so involved on eBay and all these other things. And um, so I, I started, I remember back in 2007 and it's funny that Greg Cohn was just on one of our videos because at the time in 2007, there was a, a product called upper deck exquisite football that was released and they had sent some boxes uh, to Beckett to open as part of a advertising sort of campaign. And Beckett ended up pulling like the two top cards in the product in these two boxes. <laughs> and I remember just literally losing my shit. And it was like, how could they do this? And it really just sort of opened my eyes to like the underbelly of kind of how things are going on. And that's actually how I originally connected with Greg because Greg used to work at Upper Deck. And so we got together over that um, thing. And I lived in California. He lived in California. And we got together and talked through it. And I sort of started to understand what goes on behind the scenes that many collectors really don't. And I've established relationships with Panini and Tops and Leaf and you name it through my website, which I started as a result of this one event. Um, I, I always watched wrestling since I was a little kid. But when I went to high school, 
uh, in college, um, it really sort of took into a, like a community type effect where all of my roommates were watching. Cause when I was in college, that was, you know, the middle of the, you know, the, the prime era of WWF. And, um, then when I left college and got married and had kids, like it kind of dropped off to so the whole Cena run, like the punk run, like all of that stuff during the middle of that decade, I, I really didn't have a, a, a foot in that door yet. But my son grew up to be uh, a you know a, a very an individual, very interested in YouTube, and WWE is literally everywhere on YouTube. So he was watching the old videos and new videos. And one day he comes; it was like 2016 or 2017, I can't remember. The dad, can we buy WrestleMania? And I was just like, I remembered back to when I was originally watching these pay per views, and WrestleMania was like a hundred dollar pay per view. I'm like, well, no, uh, no, I, I don't think we're going to do it. He's like, no, it's you can get a free trial. It's only ten dollars a month. I'm like, <laughs> oh, well, in that case, of course. So we ended up watching WrestleMania, and we our whole family got into it. My wife, my other kids, I have four boys. We were all sitting down, and we were watching wrestling every day. And I, being that my relationship to cards, like I always knew that there was stuff going on for wrestling. I just tell you, know, like more in the digital world, like digital cards. Like, but I, I had to see, like, was there like wrestling cards? And what I came to find out was like, not only is there wrestling cards, but they're very accessible. They're very collectible. And I started buying them and I, it was fun. My son loved opening the packs. My wife loved opening the packs. Like we were going through and finding autographs of our people. And I joined a Facebook group uh, called Wrestling Cards and Collectibles. And I, I'm now a moderator there, but originally that was what introduced me to like the community of wrestling collectors, which just drew me in because for decades I had been dealing with hobby bullshit through any number of different other avenues. The wrestling community was tight and they were supportive and they were awesome people. And so we, and but I also realized that they only collected like one person each. Like it was, you know, two or 3000 people in this group and like they all had their one guy or one girl. And so I figured out, well, I got to pick mine. Like everybody else is doing it. And Becky ended up being like at that time, right in the middle of the beginning of that sort of run in 2018, where she was just cultivating this character of the man and everything like that. And it became like this stone cold Steve Austin type character growing up. That was, he was my favorite. Like there was nobody bigger to me than Stone Cold Steve Austin. So latching on to somebody that sort of replicated a lot of what that was about was what drew me to Becky originally. And it's been off to the races ever since because on those Facebook groups, you're measured at a benchmark of what your collection is of your one person. And that's sort of what my experience was. How about you, Matt? What got you into Becky? Because it's, it's, it's a fair fair question. Yeah. Um, so I, cause, so when I started watching her kind of like really peak run, I think a lot of people would say her peak run was as the man. And she's just leading up to the big WrestleMania, right? Where she won. The yes. Yeah. That, that, that few months where she was arguably the top performer in the entire company. Right. That, yeah. That, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I, so I came in after that and she was in the, the big time Beck's gimmick, but when I came into, um, when I started watching, this was February 2022, right? You know, I didn't know a lot of, you know, I, I had I had stopped watching in the Attitude Era, but I had, you know, you hear about things and I had friends who were still kind of into wrestling. And so I, I knew John Cena was, I knew who, um, you know, CM Punk was. I had heard of like Bobby Lashley, Lashley. I had heard of guys like Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns, but like to me, they all blurred together. They all just guys with long black hair um but i knew who becky lynch was even before i got into it like years before um because all that stuff that happened as, as part of that big run just came across my social media feed or whatever and it just stuck out like even even from afar even not even hearing a promo of her seeing a match of hers just the gimmick stuck out stood out to me and so when I started watching, she was you know, one of the people that I was most excited to see. And I really love the, the big time Bex gimmick. Um, I, I thought she did a great job with it as a heel, especially, you know, like I think either her or Triple H had said when she was doing the most recent, you know, uh, face turn that she was kind of swimming up water. 
just you know prior upstream that's probably true but even even with that i think she did a great job with it um as like a foil to to bianca and so i really enjoyed that run and then of course i, I went back and watched a lot of all of her old stuff you know even going back to nxt you know at this point i've seen you know pretty much all of her her big matches um i haven't watched like every appearance of her on raw um or smackdown but um you don't like you know, her leprechaun gimmick <laughs> i watched it uh you know she it's not her best gimmick not her best gimmick. um i don't think they'll bring that one back um but yeah no i mean she, i, I I'll, everything that adam said i remember I, I met with a friend when i got back into wrestling and he asked the same thing like oh is he why you're a big becky lynch fan and i i said the same thing that adam said which was that she just reminds you of austin i mean just in that um when you look back at that the, the runner is the man and yeah. I, was, I was a big stone cold fan um from the attitude era and she just you know had that kind of connection you could see with the crowd and that she was just cool for the sake of being cool it wasn't she wasn't somebody that was shoved down people's throats she made her own way you know made her own moments and um you know, I think that was, you know, that's another thing I think that's endearing uh, about Becky to a lot of people is that she, you know, is not Charlotte Flair. You know, she didn't, ha you know, she isn't like a legacy. She didn't have kind of like, uh, you know, as like Sasha, you know, she has like Snoop Dogg as a cousin who's a, you know, WD, WWE Hall of Famer, apparently. <laughs> um, you know, she kind of had to forge her own path. That's his claim to fame. Yeah. yeah. Like, right. Yeah, right. Exactly. That's yeah. all he is. <laughs> yeah. But he had this like connection <laughs> to the wrestling industry. Um, so anyway, so like, I think that's what's endearing. I think about her to a lot of people and uh, same for me. So that's kind of how I ended up focusing on her. The other thing too, I'll say real quick is just that um, it, it, it does help, you know, obviously I collect Becky Lynch, the character, the, you know, the wrestler, the performer, um, but it is nice when, you know, the person behind the character, you know, Rebecca Quinn, who I, I've obviously never met her, I've never spoken with, to her, but, you know, she seems, from everything I can tell, a really nice, decent person. And that kind of helps um, because, you know, comparing to like collecting Pokemon, like Charizard's not going to go get a DUI tomorrow or something like that, right? <laughs> so, well, I don't um, know about that. Yeah, I mean, you never know. He's um, been hitting the sauce a lot. Crazy <laughs> times. Uh, but, you know, when you collect it, a real person, you know, everyone has flaws, everyone makes mistakes. There's a little bit of a risk that when you collect somebody, they might do something next month, next year, that makes you less than thrilled to be collecting them. Um, so it is nice that with her, by all accounts, she seems like a really nice person. So that's all. That helps. Let's <laughs> hold on. I want to dig into that. You, you said something very interesting. I just want to touch on that. I'm sorry. You, you mentioned that you decided to PC Becky before um, you saw a lot of her matches. Tony Vela um, PCs <laughs> Dexter Loomis. And he'd never seen Dexter Loomis wrestle. He just, to this day, he just liked the look of this curry. He's like, oh, this guy's got an icy cold stare here. And I'm like, why Loomis? Because you're not a Loomis guy, but you are now, right? Yeah. So talk on that, Tony. Like you were looking for your space. You know, you wanted to find who to collect. All the big names were gone. So you decide, well, I'm going to be able to actually get some of this guy's cards. And I like the look of them. I think your wife said something to you about it. And all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I don't know if Zan's whole, story with Carrion is the same, but. it, it it's, Zan and I, it was, when we were doing the World's Collide podcast, uh, Zan had made a, uh, a comment that he was now collecting Carrion Cross. And it's, I mean, let's all be honest. I don't, we don't know of anybody else who has a bigger carrying cross collection than, than Zan. there is anybody. I mean, there yeah. isn't anybody. I mean, the guy's got a massive, amazing collection. Now I never wanted to be on that same path. I just say, you know what? I already collect Kurt Angle cards. Those could be a little bit pricey. So but let me find somebody from the modern era. So I, I just, and I randomly, I couldn't have done any more than just throwing a dart at a board full of a bunch of people's pictures on it and it just happened to land on Dexter Loomis. So, so the flip I, side of what these guys were saying. That yeah, he, so I've, I've never, just... at, to, to date, I've still never seen him wrestle a match. I've never, the only time I've ever heard him speak. That's the biggest collection of the guy going. Yeah, I, and, and the only time I've ever heard him speak was on that Fireman sitcom that he was on. He, he guessed much <laughs> like that. Um, it's a great show. So I, you know, it's just something fun. You know, my wife turns around and just uh, takes one look at the guy and says, oh, so you're in the Nazis now, huh? And I, go, yeah. no, 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 no. and I go, no, no, no. And even one of her friends, her friends came by the store one time and goes, oh, Dex, is this what, what Tony collects? 
is he the Nazis now or something? I, I, same thing. She said the same thing. And I go, Oh God, listen, I'm, I'm having fun. I, I used to be a collector like you, Paul and Chuckster where I was, I, I was a master set collector back when master sets really meant something. Like I had every autograph, every relic, everything. There Remember, weren't the master, the master set collectors are the ultimate PCs, right? Correct. Because, yeah. And so I, I, I've got a stuff. pretty good personal collection of everybody. I don't have all the parallels and all the gold and shinies, but I've got a lot of Becky. But you got a, you got a, you got a whole shelf yeah. full of stuff. Of so I just, uh, yeah. you know, I, I got out of the hobby of collecting what I, how I collected in 2006, 2007 era when Topps got the license in 2005. I tried a couple of the releases like that. Probably Insider was the last one I did. Um, and then I just kind of said, you know what? I'm tapping out, man. I, I just can't keep up with the way I normally like to collect. And it wasn't until I met Zan and we kind of just sort of like talked. And I think I'd only talked to Adam a couple of times at that point. I talked about digital cards. That's how we first even communicate with digital stuff, which thank you. Got me hooked on that. Um, and then, um, because <laughs> that so was one fun. of my favorite first shows, by the way, that very yeah. first show where the first time I saw Adam and you guys did that digital show that was yeah. one of the best early shows from those early days yeah it was, I remember, it was super i remember, I remember talk, talking to you afterwards and saying who is this guy because not only does he know digital he knows our stuff inside out as well yeah you know and that was <laughs> the element so i was impressed the very first time so I it was um you know and i just uh you know got kind of not interested in collecting wrestling cards anymore i was still collecting obviously information because wtc has been around for over right. 20 years mm -hmm. Uh, and I just uh, was still collecting information and I would still go on like eBay once in a while. And I go, Oh, there's something I've never seen before. Save that image for later. Cause I might need that for a checklist at some point in time. Um, and then when, uh, you know, I had that talk with, with Zan and he took uh, the carrying cross and I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to pick somebody new and I'm going to be, a, uh, and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Like I don't own any one of ones for Loomis because to me, I, I'm on a very, very, very tight budget. I don't have a lot of expendable income coming in. Everything I make goes right back into the store as a new business. So, um, but when I can pick, but up you're things, still finding ways. But you're still finding ways to engage, and like that's, I am. I'm that's having fun that's what's like, so important here. It is, and I'm having fun doing it. You're doing it with a character, unlike you two guys, where you're probably not going to uh, uh, have a lot of competition. I I think about Mike Summer and his Norman Smiley collection. I think he's safe. Er in so far yeah. as, 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 uh, well i have what I have, what's his name um adam what was the guy's name from the national that um they bought the one of one loomis cards like they were showing to me at their booth oh yeah i can't remember it off the top of my head is he not uh but but they're part of that uh table that uh sponsored our yeah. event yeah 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 um and so um like am i envious of those things yeah i'm envious of those one on ones but you know what even the prices they pay for when i have that income is very affordable for someone like for a loomis I think they overpaid a little bit, but I mean, that's besides the point, but I'm actually kind of proud of the fact that, you know, we talk about different types of cards and stuff like that. And, you know, those Galactics, no one really talks about them as much as they should. And they're very undervalued. And so far today, only four Galactics ever hit the market for Loomis. You're, you're yes. talking to one of the biggest fans of Galactics here. Yeah. With Matt Love has been chasing those cards for a while. Well, only only four Galactics of Loomis ever surfaced. And guess who owns yeah, all four I, of them? I, I, I've this only ever guy. <laughs> I've only ever seen three of Becky's base galactic and, and for a long time, I've only ever seen two. And, um, you know, I knew, and one was in Adam's hands and the other was in, and then it passed between two Becky collectors hands. And I knew like, I, I mean, I'm probably never going to get those. And so I'm just have to wait for a third to pop up. And it just never, never did for a very long time until, um, uh, Brett, Brett McGrath, Stacking Slabs. He was yep. doing, uh, if you guys have seen, he did a, a podcast on uh, Galactics a few weeks ago. And in the run-up to that, he was going through you know, Instagram Reel. He was going through his awesome collection of WWE Galactics. And I'm like, I'm watching it. And I see a bag of Galactic. I'm like, what the hell? I'm How like, did that get in there? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, nobody has ever told me that he has one. Nobody's ever, I'm sure he knows. Um, not that like anyone owes me anything, but I'm just like, what is that doing there? Because I've been looking for this card forever. You know, that's so why I messaged him. And um, you know, he was initially like, you know, that's you know, not for sale. Um, you know, but if I ever to do so, you'll be, you know, top of mind. Um, and I, and I appreciated that. And I said, um, you know, I wasn't going to hound him, but I said, just, before I let him go, I was like, just so you know, if you ever decide to sell, here's my offer. And I think he was probably not expecting how much I offered. And, um, he, he said, well, let me, let me take a day to think about it. He said, um, you know what? I, I think, you know, it belongs with you. And everybody so. has a price. Yep. 
Everybody has a price. So, when did you guys, um, when did you yeah, guys so I was very appreciative that he was receptive to that because I messaged him like totally out of the blue. When when did you guys discover each other? When did did you make that connection that oh there's someone else that's into this as big as I am? Oh, and when, when <laughs> well, no, it's it's, it's boring for me because Adam, as soon as you get into the wrestling card hobby, you run across Adam very quickly because he has such a big following. <laughs> he's on YouTube. He's in all the Facebook groups. Um, he's very active. So I knew about Adam and his collection very early on. I'm curious to know Adam's answer, though. Yeah, what did you find out <laughs> my, about that? Because you told me dog. that there was another guy ages ago, and you knew who he was. Yeah, well, we we talked all the time. And but before we get there, I, I do want to go back real quick to something Matt said earlier about collecting somebody that has a, a really good personality outside the ring, because that's actually a really big portion of why I think she has such a large yeah. fan base and why, why Matt, I, I I'm people like Matt and I are gravitating towards her. I know Matt said he's never met her. I've actually had the pleasure of meeting her a couple of times. And there was a, in, there's a story I need to tell real fast. I promise it'll be quick because it's come up a number of times from other people. Um, and I think it's time to, to set the record straight here. I know. So the story. I travel. <laughs> yeah, I travel. I travel a lot for business. I, I'm in technology sales. I travel a lot for business. I'm in airports all the time. And um, more importantly, I'm in airports very early in the morning because my flights usually have to be someplace before a customer meeting at like 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. And I just happened to run into a situation where I was flying out of an airport in sitting in the terminal at, at like at a Starbucks typing on my computer. And I see like AJ styles and Samoa Joe and all these people start walking through security. And like, that's the thing, like WWE people are so nice. Like they are the best athletes to engage with. They are trained and, in, and they value the interaction of the customer. But out of all of those people, Becky took like 10 or 15 minutes. Cause it was like 4 AM. There was no one else sitting by these gates I'm sitting there like in my dress clothes, like for my work you know, event that I'm going to. And we talked for a while, like she is so engaging. She's so nice. And she understands the role the fans have to play. It's such an incredible experience. And she's a great person outside of the ring. Like you talk, you see her, how she engages. It's such an important thing. I don't understand. Like I can't separate the art from the artist the way that uh, some people can. Like I, I really want to collect somebody to Matt's point. But let's go back to the question that um, that Matt asked because it's funny. We there are three major Becky collectors that are out there. Uh, one of them he goes by William Wallace on Facebook. There's Matt and I, and William and I. It's not his real name, but I'm not going to divulge. I'm not going to dox him in front of everybody here. <laughs> um, Will, William and I have been talking for years ever because we both have been collecting Becky for a very long time. And, you know, we cooperate a lot of times because pricing can get so insanely out of hand. Matt said, like, hey, I'm just going to send you over my offer. I can't even count the number of times I've done that mm -hmm. because people always have a price. But we also have to be cognizant of people outside of our own purview that are going to see what those cards are going for. So to have that relationship with other collectors where we can bounce ideas off of each other and sort of give warnings, hey, this guy's a crazy, like, be careful here. Um, so Matt, um, I, I saw Matt pop onto Twitter and I think he responded to a few of my posts a couple of times and he had a handle WWE prism collector, which at the time was just a huge, you know, groundswell of information around prism, what it was doing. People were covering it all over the place. So seeing somebody come into the, the Twitter verse with that handle was like, Oh, he's either trolling me because he, he sees that I, I love prism or he's actually a prism collector. And we talked quickly uh, on one of the posts and I could see that he's an intelligent guy. He knows what he's talking about, but he also had Becky Lynch's picture as his avatar. So immediately I'm drawn to like, okay, like, What's going on here? Again, is he trolling me or is he like actually engaging? But after talking with him on Twitter a few times, uh, it was clear that, you know, his intentions were with my daughter were were good. And I, I, had, to, I had to give my blessing on the marriage. Uh, <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm serious. It, like it, Matt's a great guy. And, and we talk all the time because, you know, there's such a camaraderie among all of these collectors and like, hey, we're all chasing the same thing. We all have the same goal in mind. Like, why should we 
be in battle with one another over this instead of trying to help each other, especially because there's more than one copy of a lot of these cards. Now, that doesn't mean we don't get ultra competitive and these competitions get out of hand sometimes. Yeah. But it's it's something it's nice to be able to go back to these chats and be able to say, like, okay, what was driving the, the thought process here? And how crazy do you have to be to offer fifteen thousand dollars for a Chrome Super Fractor? But that's <laughs> a that's a conversation for another day. We've had that conversation multiple times. So at least time, we know. You check in, like if something big comes, a one of one, right? Where yeah. you know you're both going to want it and you know and, and only one of you can have it. Is there that professional courtesy at this point to each other? Every time. Because I know Brian, or sorry, I know Brian and, and, and uh, Jamie Wallace do that on some Savage stuff. They communicate, hey, have you seen this, right? A lot of guys wouldn't divulge, hey, check this out, you know, because you want to get it for yourself. But yeah, there's gamesmanship. <laughs> there's there's definitely gamesmanship. Yeah, well, you know, there's a certain spirit of camaraderie and collegiality amongst collectors, but even more so, it seems, with guys that are collecting the same thing, when you would expect that it might be competitive, because you both want the piece, you both can afford the piece, but only one of you is getting it. And like you say, it gets competitive sometimes, because... You, you know, you, you Matt gets one, Adam doesn't, and and vice versa. But just just speak on that. Has there ever been any atmosphere or any negative um, in this journey together of you guys collecting the same person? Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's goes without saying. But I think it's it's like it's something where we you mentioned professional courtesy, like that's kind of a good word for it because we're not pros at doing this. But I think it's kind of like every time something comes up, it's hard to avoid because they all, we all three of us always get tagged. Like whether it's whatnot or Facebook or whatever, I think we're in that chat the second it comes up almost every time because everybody's pinging everybody and it's hard to avoid that. So, but there is definitely gamesmanship. Like we are definitely out for our own interests 100%. And I think it's hard to hard to not have that in a competitive situation. And Matt can comment here in a second. But yeah, I mean, like it's it, like not everybody, we don't collect everything. Like we have limits. And so there are things like I'll say, hey, I'm not going for this. Like you go for it. Or, hey, this is something you might might fit better for you. I've sold Matt a bunch of cards. Like, you know, like we try and help each other get to the, the points of our collection that we know are valuable. Like, there are things that overlap obviously but like matt was collecting the ringside rainbow from select last year i had a card that was likely never going to pop up again so i made sure to reach out to him and say hey i can sell this to you i need the money for this this or the other thing so we we do deals among the three of us all the time so my collection is not static i don't think his collection is static same with the other guys so we're, we're we're definitely in in that situation where we're trying to help each other reach targets and I think something like for me with my prism rainbow where I'm two cards away, like there are deals we work out with each other. Like, Hey, I'll back off of this. If you give me this and that's worked out a couple of ways as well. So Matt, if you, if you want to add anything to that, I think I would, you know, that's my take on it at least. Yeah. Well, so, you know, I'll say, you know, one thing just sort of broadly that if you're somebody interested in, in entering a, a space like this where you're going to be a player collector you're like or you know i want to collect one wrestler but i know there's some other people um in that space already and there might be competition the the best thing you can do and my biggest piece of advice is to get to know them and be friendly with them um it it is by nature going to be competitive because if you're looking to buy one of ones there's only one of you could have it. So that's just by nature, but it doesn't mean that it has to be adversarial or get nasty or anything like that. Um, I mean, for one, it it just makes it so much more fun to be able to, as Adam said, we have a a Becky group chat where we get together and we talk about, you know, a new release coming out. We look at the checklist. She's, you know, getting this insert or, you know, she's we, a photo, like we'll wait for the photos to come up in the cards and like, oh, what a great photo they used or this photo sucks or whatever. Um, so it's great to be able to talk about that because, I mean, look, we're collecting wrestling cards, wrestling cards, which is niche enough. And then you're going to collect one person. And if that person isn't like Hogan or The Rock or Austin, chances are there's only going to be like a handful of other people in the world collecting them like like you're trying to collect them and are as passionate as you may be about that about that wrestler or superstar. So wouldn't it be like a real shame if you couldn't get along with them? Like yeah, the exactly. people in the world who like could really understand and relate to you know what you're doing. Um 
So it does happen, you know that there there are examples in our. Oh yeah, that yeah. it's going to be it's going to be a nice segue. Wait, wait, there are, there are battles over things in wrestling cards? Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, yeah. but it's not <laughs> just it's not just about like all oh, lovey dovey. Like it actually like behooves your collection to to be friends with yeah. them because one, it's better for they're, they're a source of. Women. Yeah, they're they're a source of knowledge. Like I can't tell you how many times Adam has educated me on things. Like cards will pop up. And I'll have no idea what they are. Yeah, there's like checklists and stuff online, but like, you know, like an example, like the Tops Industry Conference cards that came up and it looked like Becky on a freaking Star Destroyer or something. I didn't know what the hell this card was. <laughs> now I'm going to go to Adam and ask like, hey, Adam, what is this? Um, and, and, and Adam's been really gracious to share a lot of information with me when, you know, he could have easily just been like, you know, this guy's making my life a living hell, <laughs> you know, you can go, you know, get, get lost. Um, you know, and then the other thing too, is I get a lot of cards referred to me because people will go to Adam because he, he had, uh, you know, he has a big following and nobody, when I first started collecting, nobody who knew who I was, but because I was friendly with Adam, people would come to Adam with cards and be like, Hey, you know, do you want this? I have a Specky card and he may already have one. He may not want it. And, but he'll say, but I, I know who does. And then I'll get referred to me. Um, so I've had lots of cards come my way through that. Um, and I do the same with Adam now and, and um, the other guy when cards come my way. And, you know, one day, if Adam ever decides to sell some of his collection, <laughs> you know, I, I would like to think that I might be you know near the top of the list. So, you know, it, there's just so many reasons why you should be friendly with people um, in this space, um, as opposed to like, just saying, you know, every man for himself, it's it's a competition and I don't care about anyone else and I'm going to do my thing. But uh, that exists. That exists in our in our world. And I think it's also a sign of, you know, we, we hear about this in other sports, you know, baseball, basketball, football, that such a huge market there that obviously uh, dissension is bound to happen. So part of being uh, part of a hobby that's growing and getting more eyeballs on it is that it's, I guess it's part of the growing pains of like, well, we're big now, so we have dissension within our hobby, and it exists. And withholding information and not sharing and not, uh, you know, helping that that happens like that. So, I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen it, right? Yeah, <laughs> it seems, no, it's quite clear yeah, to me yeah. amongst light collectors that you know you said it behooves you to cooperate, and you know sometimes we don't, but for two reasons: one, it boosts the value of your collection. You know, and Matt oh, you yeah. just described very accurately how how that comes to be, right? With two or three concrete examples. But not only that, it enjoy, your time in the hobby is more enjoyable. You know, these scraps that go on amongst some people in the hobby, you know, may, maybe they enjoy that kind of thing. I don't. Um, but it, it's it's just good for the overall, your, your, your sort of psyche and your well-being. And, you know, you make friends because you have something in common. Why wouldn't that be? Like, I, I'd like to think that everybody that collects a rec, wrestling card is my brother. But that doesn't always work out that way, you know. Um we know in with some of the vintage guys, with some of the guys in PSA, that the you know that that's very competitive, and that's kind yep. of fostered that way. PSA did a smart thing when they created that registry. You know, they 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 it was like it's a, a, it's a great system. idea. Yeah, it was a starter. You get an system. actual so number. Don't use somebody as one. You know, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody with a few bucks and maybe a bit of an ego, all you need is two of them, and and now all of a sudden you you've got something. Um, you know, but this is this is really nice to see. And and that's what I was trying to get at when I asked if you ever had any atmosphere or any, any problems, because in, invariably, when you collect the same thing, now, Tony, you might not have that problem with Dexter, uh, Loomis, no. but, you know, when you're collecting Hogan's or when you're collecting big names, that's that's likely to be the case. But it's wonderful how you guys have found this space that goes beyond the collecting. You become friendly and now you're sort of you've got a group think uh, towards uh, Becky. So so this always comes up, Paul, and I want to make sure I say this on the video. We are not looking to add extra members to that chat. So yeah, like, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand you have a Becky collection. I understand like you want to be in this, you know, this cabal of Becky collectors. Like we're not accepting applications at the moment. <laughs> There's enough craziness already. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will say though, you know, I think yeah, there have been people who have come up who, uh, you know, since I came on, and I'm sure, Adam, you and uh, the other guy were like, when I came on the scene, we were like, who the hell is this guy? And I, and because I now having been in that circle and seeing when other people come in, I kind of see, 
And um, there are that since I started collecting Becky, there are there have been some people who have come in and who, um, you know, raised eyebrows. Let's say raised that. eyebrows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, spent a lot of money. And um, I, I think maybe the three of us we had slightly different approaches to that. Um, uh-huh. And I, I, you know, because I think I I tried to be friendly enough with him. Um, and, uh, you know, even though, cause I accepted like, look, people are going to collect, you know, the, if I, I don't really care. Um, and, and you know, I, I was kind of trying to figure out what this guy was doing. And sure enough, he, he bought a bunch of cards, he hit some big Becky cards. And then months later, he decided he wanted to sell some of it. And, um, because I had been a little bit more friendly with him. Uh, he was, he was willing to part with him, you know, uh, to me. And so I was thankful for that, but I think it goes to show like, you know, what, what, what's that you catch more bees with honey or whatever the, the phrase is. So. Right. And we weren't, so just to clarify, like this guy is a very nice guy. Like he, he's not, he's not the evil empire that we have probably assigned him a few times. And I've bought some cards off of him as well. Like, He's no longer really a force in the industry, but that's why we've tried to like keep this chat so tight is because people come and go so frequently. The three of us have really had longevity in that respect. But, you know, whenever somebody comes in like this and sort of just starts bidding and bidding and bidding and delivering stuff, like Matt was that guy at one point and he definitely raised his eyebrows. Anytime somebody comes into wrestling cards, regardless of who they're collecting and starts spending a shit ton of money, like every, it's going to raise eyebrows, but it mm-hmm. takes that relationship to under, to Matt's point of like, Hey, let's get to know these people. I, my approach with anything is Vince McMahon. Like don't acknowledge the competition until you absolutely have to. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so like, that's kind of was my approach. Uh, the other guy was much more adversarial. Matt was like, hey, I want to talk to him and understand. So definitely a wide range of uh, of approaches. Well, well, as the new person too coming in, um, like I said, it pays to be friendly. And I even had to learn a hard lesson. Adam, I thought you were going to mention this earlier when we talked about how I kind of came on the radar because I, I was sort of a little bit more casually collecting Becky and um, – I remember when that um, the 2022 select uh, logo, the auto logo. Oh, yeah. One of one. And that was the first big Becky card that I was like, oh, you know what? It would be cool to own that. Like, and I just want one. This is another like good origin story, Adam. If you, I know, but, <laughs> if I have to go back in time with my yeah, I, I, I just want one. And, um, you know, it'd be cool to own just something that like nobody else has. You know, it's a great looking card. I mean, I'm sure you've seen it on Adam's Instagram. It, it, other than just being, you know, uh, an auto logo, you know, there's so few of those. But just that card specifically, the colors, everything came together to make a really beautiful card. And I, I really wanted it. And I I took the approach that I was like, I'm not going to say anything to Adam about it. Um, I'm just going to be like, I, I, you know, I'm just going to treat it like an eBay auction, every man for himself. And I reached out to the owner. I said, well, I'll offer this. And then he said, well, the other guy is going to offer this. And I said, well, I'll offer this. And Adam, I don't know how you figured it out, but at some point you figured it out that it was me and you messaged <laughs> me and you were like, what the hell? Like, are you, are you out of your mind? Um, cause it was a lot of money. And, um, and I think, um, it was at that point, you know, I learned that that was probably not the best approach to that, um, to, to not talk to Adam about it. Cause, you know, to me, it was sort of, it wasn't, um, uh, natural or like my first instinct to talk to the other guy bidding on the car. It was just, I'll just bid on it. Um, but at, at the end, um, Adam ended up getting the card and he was probably pissed that he paid a lot more money for it. And I was pissed that like, I didn't know how much he paid for it, but I was like, I bet I would have paid more. I was mad I couldn't get this card. But we we talked afterwards for like a good hour or so, um, just about like, just about Becky and just like his collection and stuff he had. And we also talked about, you know, just the idea that like, you know, typically, because you had been working with the other guy and that you guys typically talk in those scenarios when a card like that comes up and that, you know, th- that would be... Uh, an approach we could have had and we might have saved each other some money um 
And and we did, and we utilized that approach like four or five other times. Have and we have. Yeah, Invariably, you guys have cost each other money along the way, though. Not not intentionally, oh, yeah. but it's you know it, you can't avoid it. You know that's happened with Chuck yeah. and I, not not knowing. You know, many years we weren't as close as we are now, and we were bidding on the same things. And every time that happened, one of us paid a little more than we might might have had to. Had we have done what you just suggested, Matt, and maybe said, "Hey, Chuck, you going after this one? I'll go after the next one." And I know Jamie and 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 Ryan do or do that on the Savage stuff, and that works well because I mean, you know, if we have someone that we can respect and we know that, okay, if I get this one, he'll get the next, you know, ultimately that's going to be a lot more helpful to our pocketbooks, I think. And, and, and because we're pretty well known, Adam and I, at this point, um, Adam certainly more than me, but like people, a big Becky card will come up. Most of the time, the owner will know both of us and they will like, you know, rightfully so I don't blame them, try and pit us against each other to get the highest price. Um, not knowing so, that we talk behind them. Exactly. Yeah, not knowing that, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to try and avoid that. So, um, yeah, I mean, like I said, well, it's like when we a, talk it's like about the compete, there's, there's, I think, good ways to go about it as far as being a good member of the community and getting along with people and then also your own pocketbook saving mm-hmm. money. So, you it, know, it, it's we have uh, the Indie Brotherhood bunch of us that that specialize in indie cards and we catch all these guys all the time because we're in constant co- communication with each other and you know we compare what is this guy doing what's that guy doing yeah and we still get caught and it's wonderful it's wonderful now because you know we're on a sort of cutting edge of it all and we're uh, always in the know of what's going on now quickly guys before we get off Becky, uh, Becky uh, can we talk about Jeopardy yeah <laughs> sure <laughs> what the hell happened I, so yeah, I, I don't know. I'm a lifelong Jeopardy fan. I watch like every day. And when I saw how bad she shit the bed, like, and she she's clearly in on it too. Like she understands, yeah. like she's holding up That's signs. In the that. He's in their Hall of it's Fame. So funny. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. I Like, listen, it's a, we've all been in those high pressure situations, but that was an all time, all time uh, low, I think, for yeah. a number of reasons. All right, guys, as we come off on the uh, hour mark, let's um, have a quick wrap up with a quick antidote. We often ask the guests to give us a story from the field or maybe we'll keep this tied to Becky or the fact that you guys are personal collectors. Something, an interesting story that you'd like to share with uh, with our audience before we sign out. Matt? Oh, um, gosh, I don't know if I have any interesting stories. Um, you know, just talking about my, my collection um, and where things are going you know, or where I see things going in the future, you know, I, I've certainly kind of slowed down a little bit. Um, part, we've been kind of forced to do that because we haven't had any recent releases, you know, but also, you know, just, just focusing on cards that are going to stand out in my collection, I think is part of, you know, the next evolution in my collecting and, um, you know, what I've been trying to do. I, when I look at a card, I'm kind of thinking like, how is this going to fit in my collection? Is it just going to like, go in the back of the row and I'll never look at it. Um, or is it going to like, is there going to be a reason I'm going to want to one day take this specific card out, look at it? Does it fill some hole? Um, and so, you know, I, I've been buying less and less. Um, I don't need to have every like red, blue, whatever, silver of every single release that comes out. Um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to just, you know, more cards getting released, um, you know, whoever that's with. And uh, just, you know, trying to find, fill in those gaps in the collection. I, I will say I was, I was excited that, I think we talked about maybe the, Adam mentioned the, the bounties I had put up. And they finally had, um, aside from actually getting the card, they finally had the effect that I wanted, which was that this product doesn't get opened. I have a bounty for a 2020 Chrome Becky Lynch um, Super Fractor. The problem with that, and I don't think it's been pulled, it's never surfaced, but the problem is that product never gets open anymore. You know, it's always like the new stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Been released in the past year because the, the price of those boxes are so high now. And so uh, finally, somebody bought on, on whatnot, uh, I think it's Shway, is it Shway Nostalgia? Yeah. Shout out to him. Yeah. He, he, he bought like a case of it um, and uh, did a break of it. But of course, kept the Becky spot for himself because wow. that's the big incentive. Was that if I pull that, it's like a lottery ticket for him. And so, um, but I, I was like, 
I mean, sure, I would have liked to just buy the Bethy spot for 50 bucks or whatever it would have sold yeah. for. But the, the point for me is like, well, at least somebody's opening the product, right? Um, so that I'm, I'm excited to see that happening. I'm excited to see hopefully more of that gets opened. Um, I don't know how much is really available to be purchased even on the open market. I did a little bit of that uh, a month ago. Um, there's not a lot. Um, but yeah, just excited to see um, some more cards come out soon. Adam, we know you could talk forever about what's going to happen next. Yeah, you have to give us a short yeah. sort of maybe we'll say two or three maybe, maybe we'll save that. Yeah, we're we're well. Let's talk about your collection. Where you see your collection going with with what's coming up with tops and yeah, that. I mean, yeah, it's 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 interesting because Matt really highlighted a lot of the same approach that I've kind of been forced to take because, um, and I'm I'm happy about that too. Like I don't want to seem like I'm bitter that I can't go and buy everything anymore because. Honestly, I've got all of these boxes in my room. I just cleaned out just an absolute ton, sent like 7,000 cards to Zan. Like, I mean, there is, there's so me? much. What about me? <laughs> he, he, you know, like he, he made it very easy to, to, to do that. But no, no, I, I reached out to you, Tony. Anyways, so, uh, so I think that the challenge that we face as collectors is like, there's a finite number of resources. There's a finite number of space in your house. And I've got like these giant pieces like this i don't my this table piece like you know there's there's so much stuff and it's like it's so hard to manage like your 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 expectations and it's like matt's right like if i'm buying a card i call it shelf worthy right if the card isn't shelf worthy do i really need to spend the kind of money to get it and most of the time i'm impulsive and have no willpower and i do anyways but like I've really passed on a lot of stuff like blacks and other things that have popped up just because I was like, you know, I don't like the photo. Hey buddy. Um, I don't like the photo. I don't like my son decided he wanted to come and be a part of the video. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, like, it's like, I, I don't want to, to really deal with things I just don't like and don't need. And I, it's, it's hard, but um, when fanatics takes back over and I think it's going to happen sooner rather than later, if, if you watch the recent video, like, my jam has always been the super fractors. Matt and I talk about this all the time mm -hmm. is like, we see the blacks and the super fractors and these really high end statement pieces as like the, the benchmark for so many collectors. That's why we spend as much as we did on the black one ones That's why we've spent as much as we have on a lot of these cards. Luckily I got a lot of the super fractors when they were still very cheap, but it's like, those are the types of situations that, I think are becoming more inaccessible because there's more and more people. That's not necessarily a bad thing. So don't make it seem like that's the case, but it's like, we have to be able to adjust. And like Tony said, like I, I'm, I don't have a budget or I don't have, you know, the time to spend on eBay. I don't have, you know, the ability to go through all these different Facebook pages. That's okay. It's still fun to just have a collection and maintain it and be a part of the community. And I see, kind of the way that it's been going down and all of some of the bad press that's been talked about wrestling card Twitter and all these other things. I'm not going to get into it too much, but like, it's, it's really hard to, to have fun when you have to deal with all of the external drama and all the external things that are going on, regardless of who perpetuates it or not. And like the challenge of with this collecting and, and having camaraderie with other individuals who are doing it the same way you are like, that makes it fun. And I love Matt, Matt and I joke all the time. We're like, oh, I get to share the gift that because I got the card this time. Like I was like, we always talk about who gets to share the, the gift of like, yes, I got it. But, you know, and Matt said, like, I was much more of an asshole to him than he made it seem. But, you know, like, it's like when we get to the point, I'm, I'm joking, but like when we get to the point where it's a big card, we're talking with each other, like we've worked out deals with each other to avoid this or that or the other thing, like, I, I've never been a part of a community where that's been possible. And like, so it's really cool to have somebody like understand and have multiple people understand, like, this is the way that makes sense because even though I'm not going to get every card, you're not going to get every card. We're still excited about what we've been able to build. And I know Dexter on Twitter always likes to say like, who's going to win this time. But like, it's really not about that. It's about just being a part of the community. And I, I think that's, really where Matt and, and William and, and all the other people that have come and gone have really sort of made us so proud to be collectors of this and why we put so much passion and time into it. So I know that was longer than three minutes, Paul. I apologize. Tony, what's the future of uh, Dexter Loomis collecting for you? I'm just keeping a, you know, I'm par for the course, man. I, I have fun just doing, 
anything from a base card to anything I can get my hands on. I don't care. I it's what's fun about the 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 community knowing what you collect is that a lot of people just tag you and it's like go oh, hey you know I saw this you know oh a lucky envelope yeah. just showed up it's like that you might want to be interested in this one kind of thing you know yeah. and so it's just it's nice that it just alleviates me having to do all the work of like having to keep looking for things things seem to kind of find their way to me now yeah, so you, and I, I don't I don't go out of my way to um to do some hard search every once in a while. I mean I have my 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 searches saved on eBay you know for things. I get my notifications every single morning of what's out there. And, uh, <laughs> the only thing I really keep looking at, I delete, 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 delete. Oh, lucky envelopes. Okay, I'll look at that real quick, I guess, because I don't have any. So I figure I might might want to get one one day, but I'm having fun with it. I don't care who has a license uh, as long as Luna's cards are being made. And hell, if, if for some reason he just retires from wrestling, I just go back and start filling the holes in from the old stuff then. I don't care. Um, I'm okay. having fun with it. Well, the the I, do have one thing. More, I, I do have one more quick thing to say. There was a, the release of Select recently had the first ever first off the line. Matt, talk about meant to be. Okay, let's let's just have a meant oh, to be yeah. moment here. This is this is crazy. So people on whatnot are just churning through these first off the line boxes. There's only a hundred cases. There's not much of it. The ringside Select uh, first off the line only has two copies, and so immediately like we're all racing each other to buy into these breaks because we know how limited the product is. Matt was the first one to land on a break where he hit one of the two ringside mojos that were numbered to two. And literally like the next day I was in another break and I hit the other one. And like, we were able to like share at the same time on Twitter that we both got this card. And it's just, it's incredible. That's like one of those meant to be moments, right? Awesome. Crazy. And, and we don't really buy into a lot of breaks. You only no, know a little bit more than me, yeah. but neither of us really are buying into like every single break. So just the 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 chances that we both just randomly bought into a break or two and ended up with those two cards. The wrestling card. Not crazy man. that we both would have ended up. Be. But <laughs> it is crazy that it we breaks. Got breaks. Well, Tony, it's nice were, to save money for once. <laughs> Tony, you hit the nail on the head there when you said have fun, and that is probably a good point to jump off. You know, it's 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 you see Tony and I and and Adam fairly regularly talking about the hobby in general and what's going on, but. Remember, we're collectors too. And probably first and foremost, we're collectors. And we don't talk yeah. about that as often because we're here interviewing people and doing monthlies and counting down mm -hmm. shit and this doing what we do for the hobby. But uh, this was a good one for us. It was fun to talk about, you know, uh, us as collectors, you know, you guys, mm -hmm. Adam is a collector, um, you know, not not sort of the hobby guy that tells us what's happening tomorrow. Um, <laughs> seeing you guys together, you know, cause you know, I, 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 I've always been curious. It's, 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 it's an interesting topic to me that some guys just can't get their shit together that collect the same things, but you guys are obviously the flip side of that and you figured it out right and quickly so that you both benefit to the nth degree. Um, you know what, we'll quickly go around the horn and just give your coordinates, but I just want to say thank you guys for coming on. And this was a great show. Like I say it was a, a collector show um, where we talk about what really draws us to this hobby in the first place. You know, we enjoy collecting wrestling cards. That's why we're here guys. You know, the rest of it also, Matt, I should thank you. Um, collector series two out in a couple of weeks. The first card you're going to see when you open the box is Matt Elvis because his name starts with A. You know, him and I always got roll call first, which is great. Um, Matt, yeah, tell us where we can find you and all your Twitter and social Send media. him his metal card. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to get that going guys. Come across it. I'd love, I'd love to own one. Um, yeah, okay. thanks for having me on, guys. This was a lot of fun. Um, you could find me on Twitter at WWE Prism, I think, and then uh, on Instagram, WWE Prism Collector. God, I mean, Adam, people uh, don't know where to find people don't know where Adam, to find just in Adam. case. Jesus Christ. I mean, <laughs> I, <have laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, like, uh, it, it's like, I, first of all, I'd like to just say, like, pay attention to WTC, like subscribe here. Like I, I, I talk about, you know, every time we sign off of one of these videos, I give my social media handles, make sure you're subscribing here. There's so much content, even if it's not just for me, it's from Tony and Paul and other individuals like joining these, like, Join here, like subscribe here, make leave comments. Like that's the other thing. Like there's not a lot of comments that get that's shared true. on some doing. of these videos. Yeah. yeah. And I it's like, like I like the please. engagement because through the engagement is how we end up connecting with each other, whether right. it be, oh my God, you collect the same thing I collect. I mean, we we get connected to each other and we help each other. And that's what the whole purpose of WTC and the price guide's all about is to help educate both people getting back in the hobby, people new to the hobby, even I mean, also guys like Paul and myself. 
you know, we're learning something new all the time. Like, oh, holy right. shit, did that set's been out for 30 years and had no idea that existed. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's a constant learning experience. And then we archive it so we don't have to go back and be surprised again later. You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that's, that's the key. There's so much here to be said about different collections that are out there. Wrestling is one of those sports where people just collect everything. Like if, if it's, if it has a wrestling connection, someone is collecting it. And that's so cool. I'm glad you're, you're highlighting some of, uh, some of the people that, that operate well within the the confines others sure. maybe not so much but i think it's like we're, we're talking about things like creating community and that's really what wtc is has been such a huge harbinger for subscribe here because this isn't there's no wrecking that's being done here this is what's driving a lot of the the conversation out on the social media this is what's driving all of those awesome things that you see are the people that are on this channel and doing the things that they do because there's so much here to share with the world and matt like one of the first conversations i had with matt was like i saw one of your youtube videos like that is a powerful tool to have in your back pocket a, a welcome wagon for new collectors like matt who has joined in the last couple of years to have a resource that like Tony's provided, like Paul has provided with the card guide to, to be able to, to, to show what is out there and what they can really have the fun with. Like what is so, why are people so passionate? Well, it's all on this channel. Subscribe here. You don't need to worry about it. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks again, Tony, wrestlingtradingcards.com. My name is Paul and Ann, wrestling card price guide. Stay tuned in the new year. We're going to be keeping these up at least once a month and where possible a couple and because there's a lot of collectors out there there's a lot of guys on the list that uh, that we want to get on here and everyone's got a unique collecting experience and uh, it's just all fun and with I... the card series it gives us the opportunity to get to know each other you know david wright said it best and tweeted the other day he says you know what this collector series is awesome because i go to the national and i can finally put some faces to names you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly and know who i'm dealing with so uh, that's what we do guys we're behind the scenes making this all a better experience for all of us uh, everybody, in case we don't see you again on this show before the holidays, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And the Collector Series will be back in 2024. Thanks, everybody, for watching.